क्लास नाइन इंग्लिश बुक चैप्टर थ्री ईश्वरन द स्टोरी टेलर वन नाइट महेंद्रा वोक अप फ्रॉम हिज स्लीप एंड सॉ अ डार्क क्लाउडी फॉर्म ही ब्रोक आउट इन टू अ कोल्ड स्वेट वॉज इट अ गोस्ट The story was narrated to Ganesh by a young man Mahendra by name. He was a junior supervisor in a firm which offered on hire supervisors at various types of construction sites, factories, bridges, dams and so on. Mahendra's job was to keep an eye on the activities at the work site he had to keep moving from place to place every now and then as ordered by his head office from a coal mining area to a railway bridge construction site from there after a few months to a chemical plant which was coming up somewhere he was a bachelor his needs were simple and he was able to adjust himself to all kinds of odd conditions whether it was an ill equipped circuit house or a makeshift canvas tent in the middle of a stone quarry but one asset he had was his cook ishwaran the cook was quite attached to mahendra and followed him uncomplainingly wherever he was posted he cooked for mahendra washed his clothes and chatted away with his master at night he could weave out endless stories and anecdotes on varied subjects ishwaran also had an amazing capacity to produce vegetables and cooking ingredients seemingly out of nowhere in the middle of a desolate landscape with no shops visible for miles around he would miraculously conjure up the most delicious dishes made with fresh vegetables within an hour of arriving at the zinc sheet shelter at the new workplace mahendra would be up early in the morning and leave for work after breakfast carrying some prepared food with him meanwhile ishwaran would tidy up the shed wash the clothes and have a leisurely bath pouring several buckets of water over his head muttering a prayer all the while it would be lunch time by then after eating he would read for a while before dozing off the book was usually some popular tamil thriller running to hundreds of pages its imaginative descriptions and narrative flourishes would hold ishwaran in thrall his own descriptions were greatly influenced by the tamil authors that he read when he was narrating even the smallest of incidents he would try to work in suspense and a surprise ending into the account for example instead of saying that he had come across an uprooted tree 
on the highway, he would say with eyebrows suitably arched and hands held out in a dramatic gesture. The road was deserted and I was all alone. Suddenly I spotted something that looked like an enormous bushy beast lying sprawled across the road. I was half inclined to turn and go back, but as I came closer, I saw that it was a fallen tree with its dry branches spread out. Mahindra would stretch himself back in his canvas chair and listen to Ishwaran's tales uncritically. The place I come from is famous for timber. Ishwaran would begin. There is a richly wooded forest all around. The logs are hauled onto the lorries by elephants. They are huge, well-fed beasts. When they turn wild, even the most experienced Mahoth is not able to control them. After this prologue, Ishwaran would launch into an elaborate anecdote involving an elephant. One day, a tusker escaped from the timber yard and began to roam about, stamping on the bushes, tearing up wild creepers and breaking branches at will. You know, sir, how an elephant behaves when it goes mad. Ishwaran would get so caught up in the excitement of his own story that he would get up from the floor and jump about, stamping his feet in emulation of the mad elephant. The elephant reached the outskirts of our town, breaking the fences down like matchsticks. He would continue. It came into the main road and smashed all the stalls selling fruits, mud pots, and clothes. People ran helter skelter in panic. The elephant now entered a school ground where children were playing, breaking through the brick wall. All the boys ran into the classrooms and shut the doors tight. The beast grunted and wandered about, pulling out the football goal post, tearing down the volleyball net kicking and flattening the drum kept for water and uprooting the shrubs. Meanwhile, all the teachers had climbed up to the terrace of the school building. From there, they helplessly watched the depredations of the elephant. There was not a soul below. On the ground, the streets were empty, as if the inhabitants of the entire town had suddenly disappeared. I was studying in the junior class at that time and was watching the whole drama from the rooftop. I don't know. What came over me suddenly? I grabbed a cane from the hands of one of the teachers and ran down the stairs and into the open. The elephant grunted and menacingly swung a branch of a tree, 
which it held in its trunk. It stamped its feet, kicking up a lot of mud and dust. It looked frightening, but I moved slowly towards it, stick in hand. People were watching the scene, hypnotized from nearby house stops. The elephant looked at me red-eyed, ready to rush towards me. It lifted its trunk and trumpeted loudly. At that moment, I moved toward. At sorry, at that moment, I moved forward and, mustering all my force, whacked. its third toenail on the quick. The beast looked stunned for a moment. Then it shivered from head to toe and collapsed. At this point, Ishwaran would leave the story unfinished and get up mumbling. I will be back after lighting the gas and warming up the dinner. Mahindra, who had been listening with rapt attention, would be left hanging. When he returned, Ishwaran would not pick up the thread of the story right away. Mahindra would have to remind him that the conclusion was pending. Well, a veterinary doctor was summoned to revive the animal. Ishwaran would shrug casually. Two days later, it was led away by its mahot to the jungle. Well, how did you manage to do it, Ishwaran? How did you bring down the beast? Well, how did you manage to do it, Ishwaran? How did you bring down the beast? It has something to do with the Japanese art. I think, sir, karate or jujitsu, it is called. I had read about it somewhere. It temporarily paralyzes the nervous system. You see, I am repeating again. It temporarily paralyzes the nervous system. You see, not a day passed without Ishwaran recounting some story packed with adventure, horror and suspense. Whether the story was credible or not, Mahindra enjoyed listening to it because of the intimidable way in which it was told. Ishwaran seemed to more than make up for the absence of a TV in Mahindra's living quarters. One morning when Mahindra was having breakfast, Ishwaran asked, can I make something special for dinner tonight, sir? After all, today is an auspicious day. According to tradition, we prepare various delicacies to feed the spirits of our ancestors today, sir. That night, Mahindra enjoyed the most delicious dinner and complimented Ishwaran on his culinary skills. He seemed very pleased, but unexpectedly launched into a most garnish account involving the supernatural. You know, sir, this entire factory area we are occupying was once a burial ground. He started. Mahindra was jerked out of the pleasant river he had drifted into after the satisfying meal. I knew on the first day itself, when I saw a human skull lying on the path. Even now I come across a number of skulls and bones, Ishwaran continued. He went on to narrate how he sometimes saw ghosts at night. I am not easily frightened by these things, sir. I am a brave fellow. But one horrible ghost of a woman 
which appears cause and on at midnight during the full moon. It is an ugly creature with matted hair and a shriveled face like a skeleton holding a fetus in its arms. Mahindra shivered at the description and interrupted rather sharply, You are crazy, Ishwaran. There are no such things as ghosts or spirits. It is all figment of your imagination. Get your digestive system examined and maybe your head as well. You are talking nonsense. He left the room and retired for the night, expecting Ishwaran to sulk for a couple of days. But the next morning, he was surprised to find the cook as cheerful and talkative as ever. From that day on, Mahindra, for all his brave talk, went to bed with a certain unease. Every night he peered into the darkness. outside through the window next to his bed trying to make sure that there was no movement of dark shapes in the vicinity but he could only see a sea of darkness with the twinkling lights of the factory miles away he had always liked to admire the milk white landscape on full moon nights. But after hearing Ishwaran's story of the female ghost, he avoided looking out of his window altogether when the moon was full. One night, Mahindra was woken up from his sleep by a low moon close to his window. At first, he put it down to a cat prowling around for mice, but the sound was too guttural for a cat. He resisted the curiosity to look out, lest he should behold a sight which would stop his heart. But the wailing became louder and less felling. He could not resist the temptation any more. Lowering himself to the level of the window sill, he looked out at the white sheet of moonlight outside. There, not too far away, was a dark cloudy form clutching a bundle. Mahindra broke into a cold sweat and fell back on the pillow. Panting as he gradually recovered from the ghastly experience, he began to reason with himself and finally concluded that it must have been some sort of auto-suggestion, some trick that his subconscious had played on him. By the time he had got up in the morning, had a bath and come out to have his breakfast, the horror of the previous night had faded from his memory. Ishwaran greeted him at the door with his lunch packet and his bag. Just as Mahindra was stepping out, Ishwaran grinned and said, Sir, Remember the other day when I was telling you about the female ghost with a fetus in its arms? You were so angry with me for imagining things. Well, you saw herself, sorry, well, you saw her yourself last night. I came running hearing the sound of moaning that was coming from your room. A chill went down Mahindra's spine. He did not wait 
for Ishwaran to complete his sentence. He hurried away to his office and handed in his papers, resolving to leave the haunted place the very next day. Written by R.K. Lakshman